Hello everybody, it's Cody at Cody's Reading Time. I'm back again with another story out of the Green Fairy book, and this one is called The Enchanted Watch. Um, if you enjoy my narrations, please subscribe. I upload new stories every single day, and there will always be something new to listen to. All right, let's find out what this story is about. Here we go. The Enchanted Watch. Once upon a time, there lived a rich man who had three sons. When they grew up, he sent the eldest to travel and see the world, and three years passed before his family saw him again. Then he returned magnificently dressed, and his father was so delighted with his behavior that he gave a great feast in his honor, to which all of the relations and friends were invited. When the rejoicings were ended, the second son begged leave of his father to go in his turn to travel and mix with the world. The father was enchanted at the request and gave him plenty of money for his expenses, saying, If you behave as well as your brother, I will do honor to you as I did to him. The young man promised to do his best, and his conduct during three years was all that it should be. Then he went home, and his father was so pleased with him that his feast of welcome was even more splendid than the one before. The third brother, whose name was Jenik, or Johnny, was considered the most foolish of the three. He never did anything at home except sit over the stove and dirty himself with the ashes, but he also begged his father to uh, leave to travel for three years. Go if you like, you idiot, but what good will it do? The youth paid no heed to his father's observations as long as he obtained permission to go. The father saw him depart with joy, glad to get rid of him, and gave him the handsome sum of money for his needs. Once, as he was making one of his journeys, Jenik uh, chanced to cross a meadow where some shepherds were just about to kill a dog. He entreated them to spare it and gave it to him instead, which they willingly, well, they willingly did, and he went on his way, followed by the dog. A little farther on, he came upon a cat, which someone was going to put to death. He implored its life, and the cat followed him. Finally, in another place, he saved a serpent, which was also handed over to him, and now they made for a party of four, the dog behind Jenik, the cat behind the dog, and the serpent behind the cat. Then the serpent said to Jenik, Go wherever you see me go. For in the autumn, when all the serpents hide themselves in their holes, this serpent was going in search of his king, who was the king of all the snakes. Then he added, My king will scold me for my long absence. Everyone else is housed for the winter, and I am very late. I shall have to tell him what danger I have been in, and how without your help I could certainly have lost my life. The king will ask what you would like in return, and be sure you beg for the watch which hangs on the wall. It has all sorts of wonderful properties. You only need to rub it to get whatever you like. So, no sooner than uh, said than done, Jenik became the master of the watch, and the moment he got out he wished to put its virtues to the proof. He was hungry and thought it would be delightful to eat in the meadow a loaf of new bread and a steak of good beef washed down by a flask of wine. So he scratched the watch, and in an instant it was all before him. Imagine his joy. Even soon, uh, evening soon came and Jenik rubbed his watch and thought it would be very pleasant to have a room with a comfortable bed and a good supper. In an instant, they were all before him. After supper, he went to bed and slept till morning, as every honest man ought to do. Then he set forth for his father's house, his mind dwelling on the feast that would be awaiting him. But as he returned in the same old clothes in which he went away in, his father flew into a great rage and refused to do anything for him. Jenik went to his old place near the stove and dirtied himself in the ashes without anybody minding. The third day, feeling rather dull, 
He thought it would be nice to see a three-story house filled with beautiful furniture and with vessels of silver and gold. So he rubbed the watch and there it all was. Jenik went to look for his father and said to him, You offered me no feast of welcome, but permit me to give one to you and come and let me show you at my plate or show you my plate. The father was much astonished and longed to know where his son had got all his wealth. Jenik did not reply, but begged him to invite all their relations and friends to the to a grand banquet. So the father invited all the world, and everyone was amazed to see such splendid things, so much plate and so many fine dishes on the table. After the first course, Jenik prayed his father to invite the king uh, and, his and his daughter, the princess. He rubbed his watch and wished for a carriage ornamented with gold and silver and drawn by six horses uh, with harnesses glittering with precious stones. The father did not dare to sit in, the co in this gorgeous coach, but went to the palace on foot. The king and his daughter were immensely surprised with the beauty of the carriage and mounted the steps at once to go to Jenik's banquet. Then Jenik rubbed, uh, rubbed his watch afresh and wished that for six miles the way to the house should be paved with marble. Whoever felt so astonished as the king, never had he traveled over such a gorgeous road. When Jenik heard the wheels of the carriage, he rubbed his watch and wished for a still more beautiful house, four stories high and hung with gold, silver, and damask, filled with wonderful tables, covered with dishes uh, such as no king had ever eaten before. The king, the queen, and the princess were speechless with surprise. Never had they seen such a splendid palace, nor such a high feast. At dessert, the king asked Jenik's father to give him the young man for a son-in-law. No sooner said than done, the marriage took place at once, and the king returned to his own palace and left Jenik with his wife in the enchanted house. Now Jenik was not a very clever man, and at the end of a very short time he began to bore his wife. She inquired how he managed to build palaces and to get so many precious things. She told, he told her about the watch, and she never rested till she had stolen the precious talisman. One night she took the watch, rubbed it, and wished for a carriage drawn by four horses. And in this carriage, she at once set out for her father's palace. There she called to her own attendants, bade them follow her, to, her into the carriage, and drove straight to the seaside. Then she rubbed her watch and wished that the sea might be crossed by a bridge and that a magnificent palace might arise in the middle of the sea. No sooner said than done, the princess entered the house, rubbed her watch, and in an instant the bridge was gone. Left alone, Jenik felt very miserable. His father, mother, and brothers, and indeed everyone else all laughed at him. Nothing remained to him but the cat and the dog whose lives he had once saved. He took them with him and went far away, for he could no longer live with his family. He reached at last a great desert and saw some crows flying towards a mountain. One of them was a long way behind, and when he arrived his brothers inquired what had made him late. Winter is here, they said, and it is time to fly to other countries. He told them that he had seen in the middle of, a, of the sea the most wonderful house that had ever been built. On hearing this, Jenik at once concluded that this must be the hiding place of his wife. So he proceeded directly to the shore with his dog and his cat. The, when he arrived on the beach, he said to the dog, You are an excellent swimmer, and you, little one, are very light. Jump on the dog's back, and he will take you to the palace. Once there, he will hide himself near the door, and you must steal secretly in to try to get a hold of my watch. No sooner said than done, the two animals crossed the sea, the dog hid near the house, and the cat stole into the chamber. 
The princess recognized him and guessed why he had come, and she took the watch down to the cellar and locked it in a box. But the cat wriggled its way into the cellar, and at the moment uh, the princess turned her back, he scratched and he scratched till he had made a hole in the box. Then he took the watch between his teeth and waited secretly till the princess came back. Scarcely had she opened the door when the cat was outside and the watch into the bargain. The cat was no sooner beyond the gates than she said to the dog, We are going to cross the sea. Be very careful not to speak to me. The dog laid uh, this to heart and said nothing, but when they approached the shore, he could not help asking, Have you got the watch? The cat did not answer. He was afraid that he might let the talisman fall. Then, uh, when they touched the shore, the dog repeated his question. Yes, said the cat, and the watch fell into the sea. Then our two friends began to each other, or began each to accuse the other, and both looked sorrowful at the uh, place where their treasure had fallen in. Suddenly, a fish appeared near the edge of the sea. The cat seized it and thought it would make a, a good supper. I have nine little children, cried the fish. Spare the father of a family. Granted, replied the cat, but on one condition that you find our watch. The fish executed his commission, and they brought the treasure back to their master. Jenik rubbed the watch and wished that the palace, with the princess and all its inhabitants, would be swallowed up by the sea. No sooner said than done. Jenik returned to his parents, and he had his watch and his cat and his dog. They lived happily to the end of their days. And that is the end of that story. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do enjoy my narrations, please subscribe. Uh, I upload new stories every single day on my channel, and there's always going to be something new to listen to. All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.